In this video, we're going to look at LTPA. Now, we know from previous videos that if you have a WAS setup, you're going to have an application here. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to draw this a little larger. You're going to have an application here, and on top of or that application will be running on top of a server. Now, this is a Java JVM server, so not a physical server. And then on top of that, it's going to run on a node, and then the node is itself going to, in a distributed network environment like the ones we've been talking about, it will be running inside a node, and then that will itself be running on some sort of operating system. So like some operating system number one and operating system number two like that. So what's interesting here is that the application one that we have been looking at and application two, if you have a second one, which in this case, let's say that we do, is going to have, let's node there, is going to have two containers. And we've talked about these containers in separate videos. So let me move this down and I'll sh just describe that again really briefly. The advantage of having WebSphere application server or any Java EE or Java Enterprise Edition server is that you get two containers. And the first one is called the web container. And the second one is called the EJB container. And what's interesting about this is that inside the web container, you have something, you have multiple things actually, but the most important one for our purposes is called a servlet. And it's the servlet that will answer requests by the browser. So if you're this user out here and you want to get into a web page, it's going to come into the application server and then go into the servlet like that. And then the EJB, what, what the servlet's going to do is just uh, hand, basically offload all of its processing, so business logic, into the EJB. And the servlet itself is mostly responsible for outputting HTTP. And its heavy lifting goes into the EJB. And then the EJB can do interesting things like use a service. There's a whole series of potential services it can use. And one really important one is a security service for this video because the security service will let the system, and the system here I mean is the entire WAS system. So we could draw that like this and we would call this WAS. And what that lets you do is the security system can connect out to, actually let me, you know, if we're going to be really specific about this, this is going to be really the WAS portion of it. Web3 application server, of course, and then what it's going to let you do is go out here to, for example, Active Directory and also potentially SDS. And like we said before, what would specifically happen is there's a component here. It's called VMM, which will virtualize all of, and uh, let me just kind of show you here, and something called a realm. And what happens here is that the VMM will take your two LDAP repositories, or as many as you have, and then virtualize them in a way, in such a way that... Let's draw this correctly. It will virtualize them so that what you get is essentially this. There's a connection to AD and a connection into SDS that is provided by VMM. And then VMM just sees, or I should say was, sees VMM. It doesn't see Active Directory. It doesn't see SDSS. It doesn't know anything about those things. All it knows is VMM. And VMM is really interesting because it now contains essentially a way to connect over to all of your user repositories, and that's known as a realm. So what's interesting here is that when you look at 
trying to log in from this client here, this connection here into the servlet, the question that you, we have here is how does SSO figure into this picture? And that's what we're going to talk about here. And the way this happens is through, essentially through the servlet. Remember that these connections again, they're coming into the servlet here. In, in application one, we are going to make this connection to the servlet. And then what happens if the user now turns around and wants to get into this application here, into application two? Well, same thing as before, right? We're, we're still going to have this web container and there's, we're still going to have an EJB container. The delegation uh, well, of duties is still going to happen between that servlet in there and the EJB over here. So that's still, all that is the same. But what's, what's interesting and what's sort of uh, different here is that we're going to introduce this idea of LTPA. And what LTP, actually, which sits, by the way, right here on the server. And it facilitates communication between the two servers. We're going to come back to that idea in a minute. But essentially what's going to happen is your application server is going to offload its processing of the security portion of things into the security service. So, you know, you are essentially um, saying, hey, security service, tell me who are, is, is this user allowed? And what I mean by that is at this point, in our SSO, <clears throat> there's probably a website here that is going to ask for a username and a password. And that's probably happening right here. So what happens is the application, though, that it's running is still this JVM right here. And that username and password get sent to, your application is going to send or check the username and the password against the security provider. And that security provider is going to essentially run through this stack like this. It's going to go from the security provider into the server, into the node, into the cell, and then out finally to check the realm. Because the realm is going to be, again, that sort of cop, sort of a, not a copy, but it's it, the access out to AD and SDS. Now, that is the case of and that line is pretty crazy, but you get the idea. It's going to do essentially that. Now, the same thing would happen if our web user went directly to our second application. So if he did this, then the same process is involved, right? It's The application is still going to outsource the security portion of things off to the security service. And then it's, so it's going to basically do this. Uh, just like we drew before, let me use the same color. So we're going to go to the security service, to the server, to the node, and off to the realm. And and that's interesting because there's a very good chance that if the person logging in right here is, say, Bob, well, Bob's account is actually probably here in AD, or Bob's account could be here in SDS. So really, your WAS system is just checking to be sure that this is the case. So this, what's the other piece of LTPA that's very interesting is that so so when your application did this this checking on the VMM through VMM to the to the realm, it issued so provided that you correctly authenticated here, gave the right credentials, then. This server, let's say we're using this route here. So we're going to the first application server. You are going the this server is going to issue an LTPA token. So this is what we were saying before. Now there's two separate things. On the one hand, you have a token, LTPA token, and this is, on the second hand, you have something called an LTPA key. They are not the same things. We're going to look at why and what they are in a second, but the token is what we're dealing with right now, and it's the server that gave us the token. 
And in fact, it's the key, as we're going to see later, that happens here. That process of keying and, and uh, communication between the servers is all about keys. But for right now, it's just between our server and our client, and that is the token. So at this point, what happens is your client has this token. And what it's going to do is send the token back and forth between communication with the application server and the client. And the client here is a web browser. So that is how the client is going to authenticate each time to the server. Now the question is, that's supposed to be a check mark. So the question is, what happens if the client now says, well, Okay, that's great, uh, but I also want to connect over here to this server. Well, what, what it's going to do is present this token, and that token, by the way, is held in a cookie, and we're going to look at the cookie here in a minute, but it's going to present that same token it's, um, off to the second application server. So it has been using this kind of, it's been doing this up till now, but, n but at this point, it's also going to present that same token to the second application server. And that application server is going to look at it and say, hmm, um, that server that issued it came from this server over here. So it's going to check in with that server and say, hey, is this, uh, is this accurate? Is this the right, is this the right person? Is this the right um, credentials uh, that, you know, we should be using? And that is where the keys come in. This is the portion of the keys. So let's look at that.